Hi friends. When they write the history books about 2020, I don't even know where they are going to begin. Do you? It has been one very, very strange year to date. Since March, we've come together with friends and family and church family only in a very limited and tentative way. And then just this week, we find ourselves under a tornado watch in this part of New Jersey, though thankfully we were spared the brunt of the storm. Professional sports have returned to our TVs, at least for the time being, but without any spectators. And so I find myself now watching the Stanley Cup playoffs in the month of August. This is a disorienting season. Wouldn't you agree? Just a couple of days ago, I started reading a book called How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You Are Going. How to Lead When You Don't Know Where You Are Going. So be encouraged. Maybe we'll find all of the answers. I doubt it. The subtitle of the book is Leading in a Liminal Season. And it's written by a woman named Susan Beaumont, who was a consultant, a coach, a spiritual director. It's a very practical book, and certainly I don't expect it to hold any great secrets, but I do hope that we can learn from it. But for today, I wanted to share some words with you from that book, because I believe they beautifully capture how many of us are feeling in this liminal space. Beaumont defines a liminal space as a threshold place between an ending and a new beginning, a season where something has ended, but a new thing has not yet begun. She writes liminal seasons where watching and waiting can be difficult, over planning can be futile, and it simply isn't helpful to pretend we understand what happens next. Liminal seasons, she writes, are challenging, disorienting, and unsettling. We strive to move forward with purpose and certainty. Instead, we feel as though we are trudging through mud, moving away from something comfortable and now towards something that cannot yet be known. Does that sound familiar to you? Trudging through mud, trying to plan. Yet she goes on to say liminal seasons can also be exciting and innovative. All truly great innovations are incubated in liminality. God's greatest work, she says, occurs in liminal spaces. Maybe it's true. Consider Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham and Sarah. In the New Testament, Jesus rises from the waters of baptism and enters into the desert for 40 days. Saul is struck blind on the Damascus road and reemerges days later as a reoriented Paul. The Christian story may be an invitation into liminality. Maybe it is there that we can meet with God. The Franciscan priest Richard Rohr said of liminal spaces, this is the realm where God can get at us best because our false certitudes are out of the way. So what happens next? I cannot say with certainty because I do not know, but this I do know. God, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, will not leave us alone. In fact, that very God may be about the work of transformation in our lives right this very moment in the midst of this liminal space. Perhaps God will do a work of transformation.
go in God's grace this day.